Good morning, this is TCR, TroyCommunityRadio.com. I'm Clint Myers on 1071 WTJN, Saturday morning programming, a service of Outlook Financial. And it's time for our last mayor's report of 2018. With me is Mayor Michael Beamish. Good morning. Well, season's greetings, Clint and uh, David and all those who are listening to the broadcast. Hard to believe that uh, here we are, we're at the end of the year. End of the year, uh, Christmas right around, uh, literally right around the corner. Yes. And, uh, gosh, it just uh, seems like this whole fall season and now we're into winter season just flew by. It, the, the entire year has flown by for sure. Lots of things have happened in Troy. Lots of things coming up. Uh, I know one of the things, you guys started a new recycling uh, initiative this year and uh, celebrating like recycling. Well, I, I think it's good that we share that uh, because the recycling can go on year round. Um, and, uh, you know, Rumpke of Ohio and the city of Troy have partnered together in a project that they call Look Who's Recycling. And it, it has been a really, we've done it quarterly. And we've just finished our fourth recipient of the recycling award that we give out. We ask the question, why do you recycle? And then they answer that, and we look at it. Our street foreman, Jerry uh, Molins, who we've had here many times on our show, uh, kind of looks through and picks a uh, resident uh, that we becomes the quarterly uh, recipient of the recycling award. Uh, this past recipient was Anthony Moran and his family. Okay. Uh, and I'm real proud of that because I had Anthony in school and that's always nice to see uh, some of those students that really believe in recycling. But the whole idea is to be good stewards uh, of, uh, of our environment, protecting our environment, and not just for the moment. Uh, and this is something I want to share today as we start to look at the season of giving and what you can do to help out. Well, we can help out the environment through recycling efforts, and that way we benefit uh, and value recycling as it affects uh, not only today but future generations in, in, in recycling. We hear a lot about uh, all the things that uh, are good to recycle and uh, produce other good products. So um, we have started that initiative. It went this year, and I'm uh, certainly hopeful that it will go through uh, 19 as well, as we have four more recipients of the Look Who's Recycling campaign. So I wanted to share that because it is something as we start to look at, especially this time of year, where we open gifts and we have a lot of paper products. Oh, for sure. If, if we can recycle those, then we we not only help uh, bring joy and cheer at the moment, but for the future with uh, our environment. It, it's just one more thing that, that we can do in the community to uh, really help keep things, well, clean, organized. And uh, in my own kitchen, I have two trash cans. I have one, one for trash, and then I have one that I just throw recycling in. It makes it real easy come uh, trash time. Take one out and put it in the recycle bin. I put the other one in, in trash. And what I've noticed is uh, the decrease of what I'm actually throwing away. That's true, and, and, and I want to talk about the cart system that the city has provided, but we do have two carts. We do have the recycling Rumpke cart, and mm -hmm. we also have the City of Troy trash cart, and that you just roll those out on your specific day, and we ought to talk about the day, because you know Christmas Day and New Year's Day, that's the only two times of the year where we have to uh, move back the pickup day uh, to the next day because so, we have no pickup on Christmas Day and no pickup on uh, New Year's Day. So but those are the only two days out of the year. The rest it. of the time, it, it runs flawlessly. Whatever day your normal day is, the normal day we'll pick it up. But on those two upcoming dates, uh, we will say put your trash out the day after. So just stagger a day. This is we only do it like you said twice a year. That's right. And here we are. So if you just keep that in mind for uh, Christmas Day and New Year's Day, uh, and you'll be able to get rid of all that extra paper, the boxes, wrapping, and everything that comes along with it, uh, and put that in your recycling bin. 
Yep, uh, those carts are there for a reason, and they uh, roll easy. I do that every week, and uh, uh, but I think it was good that at the end of this close of this 2018 year that we do talk about recycling as a gift we're giving to the environment. Absolutely. My favorite thing still, uh, above the wheels on the cart, is the fact that it has a lid. I mean, <laughs> when we all had the little tubs, you try to get everything in there, but if it is raining or the wind's blowing, you had stuff everywhere. So now this keeps it all neat and tidy. It's in one place. You don't need to worry about it. Another effort to try to, uh, you know, to, to provide service. That's good. Now, uh, we mentioned uh, that this is the last mayor's report of the year, but uh, you also had your last council on Monday night. Yeah, that's right. December 17th was our last uh, meeting of this the 2018 year. We'll start over in January of uh, 2019. Um, but we did have a number of um, items to discuss. In fact, there were like uh, 13, uh, there were seven resolutions, six ordinances. Some are tied together, dovetail. If I could uh, kind of elaborate a little oh, bit on certainly. that. Uh, we already talked about the recycling presentation I was able to make to uh, the Moran family. Uh, but the uh, in terms of um, resolutions, we did uh, look at the stormwater fees, and this is going to be what I think is a good thing for citizens, that yes, we do have to have a slight rate uh, raise of uh, 40 cents a month. However, that's going to be stretched. It's going to increase in 19, but then the years of 20, 21, 22, and 23 are going to be uh, not changed. Uh, they'll be. Uh, it's locked set. in now. It's locked in. Okay. So that way people can plan on that increase. And the increase is for the projects that involve stormwater. And we have a number of those projects. So the 40 cent will be in uh, an increase in 19, but then you won't see that increase through the year 2023. That was decided on by council. We had seven members of council present, so that passed 7 0. Um, you. Uh, the, the Lincoln Community Center, uh, we've had in a budget item um, that has been tabled or moved to different readings. Now it is going to be uh, withdrawn and the motion will be postponed indefinitely. And that is due to the communication that we have had with the Lincoln Community Center uh, team as well as the city team looking at how we can help each other as a community, uh, as a community center, and their expansion plans that I know they have. Uh, so we are postponing that, and that voted was voted 7-0 to postpone indefinitely. So you won't see that on the agenda because we have a good working relationship with Lincoln Community Center, their board, and their administrative team. Gotcha. So that that's uh, two items. The other big item that we discussed was the Enterprise Zone Agreement 37. That's between ConAgra Foods and the agreement there. They are looking on a potentially $69 million expansion project to bring, you know, we are the world Slim Jim capital. Oh, yeah. Now. We also do frozen pizzas and frozen foods at ConAgra. Well, now they're looking at a, a, another upscale line. Uh, I think it's called the Duke line. And that would, if it came to Troy, would provide uh, at least 50 jobs, full-time jobs, and a 69 million plus uh, expansion project wow. right here in Troy, Ohio. And we're really hopeful. Um, they need uh, to have some agreement uh, okays from council past 7 -0. Um, there were some letters of endorsement. It goes to their corporate, and they'll make the final decision, but I think we're in good position with having such a, a, a high productivity of the Slim Jim uh, market here and, and other reasons, and we have the land to, to expand. So we're very, very hopeful that ConAgra Foods in the near future will be able to announce that expansion coming to Troy, Ohio. Uh, so. Uh, I'm excited about that. Now they'll be expanding where where they currently are. Absolutely. Okay. They have the land and and uh, 
Jeff Irwin is the general manager there, and uh, I think we're all encouraged by the possibilities, and we'll just have to have a wait and see until corporate makes that final decision. But uh, we're in a pretty good position, I believe. Looks good for Troy. It looks good. We'll just hope and, and pray that that comes to a reality in 2019. The other major items is um, we have uh, different bargaining units that we negotiate with, and this is the year where we do that in negotiations. We try for a uh, three-year contract, 2019, 2020, 21, 22, um, or 21, I stopped, uh, three-year contract, 19 through 21. And uh, with six bargaining units, uh, you know, that's a lot of negotiations that take place. And, of course, we talk about the terms and conditions of the contract for employment. We talk about wages and benefits. All that enters into the discussion. And so many of our resolutions uh, dealt with the terms and conditions of employment. Many of our ordinances dealt with the wages and benefits uh, that we looked at for our bargaining units. And it's really great to have before Christmas agreements with all those units. Uh, and that way we can move into the next three years. Well, uh, a fresh confident. start at the beginning of the year. Absolutely. And we also had a, uh, another ordinance that dealt with seasonal wages for our part-timers. And we raised that rate above and beyond what the state minimum wage is. And uh, I think it's now $8.55. So people who are looking for part-time employment through the summer months, especially those coming back from college, uh, Troy's a good place to, to check in on, see what positions are opening. So all those resolutions, all those ordinances, many tied together, uh, but there were 13 of those, so that's what we spent our greater uh, amount of time with the several members of council that were, uh, were present to vote on. So uh, that was pretty much it. Okay. Well, that then, like, like you say, pretty much it. That wraps up 2018. we we'll are start the fresh year here in, well, just a little over a week. Just a little over a week, and uh, it, it gives me an opportunity, Clint, to certainly say Merry Christmas to you and David and all those who uh, constantly listen to Troy Community Radio. Uh, I've been saying this for a long time, and I think it's very appropriate to show our appreciation to you as a radio station and uh, to all those that are out there that I call the doers of our community. They not only uh, uh, are supporters, but they get out there and make things happen. They are true partners of Troy, and so I wish them all a Merry Christmas and certainly a prosperous 2019 uh, council. Gosh, you know, I've said this before, it's, we are a statutory form of government, so we have basically three branches, and council's the legislative branch, and I want to tell you, they have achieved a great deal in 2018, and I, I just look forward to 2019. When I think of all the people that are involved in making uh, decisions in the town, I want to point out again, these are people that live in town, they're part of the community, so uh, uh, there's always a way that folks can get involved in the local government, because when you have the council meetings, it's open to the public. You can watch it uh, on TroyOhio.gov live while that's going on, and so many subcommittee meetings that people can come to and voice their opinions. Well, you've done a great job of kind of uh, capsulizing the whole year as a member of council, as the mayor who attends those meetings and sees the efforts, that due diligence that's done. And as you said so eloquently, you know, these are people, when they make a decision, they have to live by that decision as well. Right. So we're all in here trying to be the best community 
community that we can be. And, and obviously, I'll close by saying, you know, to be a best hometown in Ohio, you must be doing something right. And we have done that now twice. Well, thank you for doing it right, Mayor. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Anything else you'd like to add this morning? No, I just wish everybody again a, a Merry Christmas, a, a prosperous New Year. We look forward to, with vision uh, in 2019. Merry Christmas to you and your family as well, Mayor. Thank you. This has been the Mayor's Report with Mayor Michael Beamish. I'm Clint Myers on 1071 WTJN.